Bicycle Madhouse Radio, your home to everything biker, biker news and discussions of the day, and now, the Motorcycle Madhouse Mayhem Evening Show with James Hollywood Machikari, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, only on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all major podcasting platforms. Bookmark Motorcycle Madhouse Radio on your favorite mobile app now. Rock on! What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? Welcome to the show, baby. It's almost a weekend coming. It's going to be a hell of a weekend. Got a lot of stuff planned, man. Got a lot of stuff planned. First of all, everyone wonders why I bang on Harley Davidson, you pricks. Go out there trying to freaking start the 01 fat boy. Guess what? Rant, rant. Click, 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 click. Probably the damn battery, and it's a brand new battery. I have to go diagnose it to see if freaking the stator or the freaking uh, regulator's out. Something like that. Boy, was I pissed. And guess what? Guess what? Ended up taking out the boulevard, riding around with a friend of mine. And it's like, really, the damn bike is sitting in the garage. Really wanted to ride the fat boy today. And that all goes uh, kaput. Kaput. And man, I take care of that thing, and it does that to me. Hmm. And some people wonder why the fat boy is not the favorite of the bike. Not only did it uh, do this today, then you had to get the cam to, uh, or what, the cam tensioner shoes. <sighs> All that damn money. I don't know. Don't know after this one what I'm going to do with her. Uh, it just gets to be a bottomless pit full of money. My God, what the hell is wrong these days? Uh, anyway, really appreciate all the support over on Spotify. You guys are rocking and rolling. You can listen to the show at work, on your bike, all that good stuff. Uh, just download the Spotify app, Motorcycle Madhouse, and... Uh, <laughs> We're going to have a good damn show. We'll help you pass the time. Today, we got a lot of news uh, covering some pagan stuff, uh, some stuff up north over to Oz, where I always say they fooling around, baby, fooling around. Uh, got an interesting email, and I think this is start off the monologue. Uh, give it from a different point of view. Uh, email came out, and I, I've discussed this issue before. I really have. Uh, it's kind of like beating a dead horse, if you will. But why clubs can't get along? Why can't they drop stuff? You see it all the time in the comment sections when I do news stories. Uh, and quite frankly, and I said it before, what's it matter to you? If you're an independent, you're not in a club, so what do you care? But to dive a little deeper into the subject, and hopefully, hopefully, put it to rest. I got a scenario for you. You got a buddy. You guys are tight. Grew up. The whole nine yards. You're both in a club. You go out to say to the bar. Next thing you know, a rival comes in. Rival club. And because you guys don't get along in the clubs, next thing you know, fight breaks out loose. And your best friend gets shot, say, in the head. He passed away right there and then. My question is, if you were in that position, why would you want to let it go? That's not brotherhood. Brotherhood is trying to make things right. Yes, a lot of clubs have been going at it for decades upon decades. And I know... A lot of people around nowadays don't even know how it started. Problem is, over the decades of going back and forth, a lot of people has given their life for that patch. And they also have a lot of people that got life sentences for the club. So again, how do you expect peace? 
That is not reality. That is not gonna happen. Because there's blood on both sides of the aisle. And true brotherhood, you know, my brother's keeper, says you got to take care of that situation. So it's a back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That is the reality. Now, some clubs, they go with prison rules. Now, if you don't know what prison rules are, go check over at Big Hurt or Wes Watson's channel, and they'll give you the skinny on it. The stuff in the prison, it's more racial type of deal. Whites, uh, you know, don't talk to blacks. Blacks don't talk to whites. Uh, that type of deal. But it's a constant back and forth. Once you're an enemy, you're an enemy. There is no going back on that. None whatsoever when there is blood spilled. Yeah, there's been times when clubs have tried to get along, but it just never sticks. Because in the back of your mind, how are you going to go to a meeting, say you're going to a meeting to solve all these problems, and look across the table and see the guy that shot your buddy, that you grew up with, and not do nothing? I don't think it's possible. Now, I'm talking from a gang type of level, I guess. Because I know in the gangs, especially here in Chicago, no damn way is that ever going to happen. Will it happen in MC clubs? Maybe. Maybe. I doubt it, but maybe. But it's just not that simple to put aside all the past. Because, again, it compounded over time. And what originally started everything and the people that did it, yeah, people might not know who they are, but they sure to hell know what happened in between with buddies and brothers going to jail and dying for the patch. My personal opinion, my personal opinion, and it's not gospel, is they gave everything for that patch. You trying to put peace to it, that disregards everything that they did. Everything. I just, I can't see it. Yeah, would it be great if, say, everybody got together, formed a commission like, you know, the syndicate did? In New York, in Chicago, where they broke everything up. Well, yeah, it would be pretty cool to see that. But it's different types of sets, too. Where the syndicate and everybody, that's money. They're out there. They got to divvy it up because there's millions upon millions of dollars at stake. And if there's freaking gangland wars going on, next thing you know, you got the feds hanging all over your pecker. And you can't make the money. Clubs are not gangs. Yeah, there is people that go outside the club, do their thing. But it has nothing to do with the club as a whole. So, what... How can I say this? What benefit is there to try to come together? Yeah, a lot of people in there say, well, you know, it's going to keep the cops off everybody, restrict profiling. But again, where is the monetary encouragement for that to happen? Like I said, with the syndicate or outfit mob, whatever the hell you want to call it, man, we call it syndicate here. They have millions of dollars at stake, and it has to happen for the good of the business. But it don't have to happen in the clubs. And my biggest thing is, if you're an independent or a motorcycle enthusiast, 
Why come on the platforms and say, well, you know, clubs need to get along? It really don't affect you, does it? So at that point, what does it matter? The scene... I always say it's not cookies and ice cream. It just ain't. The reality is... I guess you can put it into tribal warfare type of stuff. You know, one tribe against the other. Uh, as soon as there's movement. And this is out throughout human history. You get, Look at what's going on in the Middle East. Thousands of years worth of freaking war and hate. There ain't ever going to be peace there. I don't care what they try to tell you. It's too indebted in the soul of the people. And that's what they know. And I think you can apply that to clubs. A lot of stuff popped off in the 60s and the 70s. And the reason being, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, if you're out there. But there was once a deal. Where this particular 1% club stayed there. Another stayed here. Another stayed there. But there was a club that crossed those lines. And next thing you know, all hell broke loose because they didn't keep their end of the bargain. <laughs> What's funny, uh, one of these wars, and you got to know your history, was started over a woman. Yes? That's why a lot of clubs want their women to shut up. And a lot of people are going to say, well, they're nothing but male chauvinist pigs. That ain't the reason, honey. The reason is there's been a lot of blood spilled because women have big mouths. Especially when they get drunk. They get drunk, they start hanging on the wrong people, next thing you know, stuff pops off, people start dying. Why? Because of a woman. It's actually kind of interesting if you look at the history of property patches. You know, whatever your source is, you know, we can agree. The property of patches, you know, she's a part of the family, she's with us. That kind of tried to curtail all that type of fighting. But once the cat's out of the bag, man, it's on. There isn't no putting that back. Because a lot of people, they take brotherhood very serious. Ask yourself, ask yourself this. Your real blood brother. Your, you know, your family. Put that in the situation here. What if they were killed, you knew who did it, would you seek peace? I don't know about you, but hell no. There is, there is no justice for your blood brother until the other one is taken out. Now, you can kumbaya, tree hug, all that type of stuff. Oh, they got justice in the prison system. No. Your brother was taken away from you. He's still living. So you see the mentality that goes with it? Yeah, it, it's all fine and dandy to say, you know, let's get everybody together. it would be better for everyone. That's just... Ass nine, if you ask me. And I'm not trying to be the dick to the guy that emailed me, but let's be frank, it's ass nine. Humans have too many emotions that they can't put away. And it's just the reality of life. Does it affect motorcycle profiling? Yeah, it does. The club profiling, because guess what? Stuff popped off. The famous one, 2015, Twin Peaks. Nobody knows what the issue is. Only the clubs know what uh, led to all that stuff. Yeah, there's been some people that came out and talked about it. But 
there's truth from all angles on that one. And after that popped off, next thing you know, Texas became one of the biggest pricks in the country when it comes to motorcycle clubs. Pricks to this day. Because of the beef. But that just comes with the territory, if you ask me. That's why... I always say, because I see these comments all the time, not only on my platform, but other platforms, the clubs should get along crap. It's just not reality, and it's never going to happen, so why keep uh, saying that? Especially when it has absolutely nothing to do with you. If you're not wearing a patch, what the hell do you care? How many times people have to ask you that? Give it up. It's wishful thinking. Especially if you're playing not only by prison rules, but if you are uh, actually believe in loyalty and honor. That wouldn't even come to your mind. Because loyalty goes farther than the grave, man. And honor in what you represent goes farther than the grave. It's always going to be there because if you believe in them, you're going to do what you got to do. That's why you see a lot of action with clubs. Because they do know what honor is. They do know what loyalty is. They do know what love is. They do know what respect is. And that's why you've been seeing it go on for decades upon decades. Because you dishonor everything you're supposedly standing for if you let it go if your brother was taken down. You know, that is just my way of looking at it. And like I said, I could be wrong. I can be wrong. It's not gospel. Everybody has their own opinions, as they should. I'm just looking at it from the angle that I know. It's not realistic, and it's never going to be. And it's been tried. Again, I talked about that. It's been tried, but it never stuck. So, that's what I got to say to that subject. Uh, I'm sitting here still pissed off about my foot. Freaking fat boy. Uh, you know what? That shoe salesman, uh, freaking Al Bundy of Harley Davidson, you're a prick. Even though you weren't around when it was bought. But you know what? You got to put out some better damn products. It is no wonder that people are going to other bikes. You know, when you buy a motorcycle, you expect to ride it. Not to have it in the damn garage, working on the bike all the damn time. Yeah, it's fun to do that kind of stuff. But not when you want to just go and jump on the damn thing and ride. And that's one thing about, uh, I have to say, BMW, uh, Suzuki, Kawasaki, all that stuff. Even Triumph. When you want to go and ride your bike, you just jump on. You don't have to worry about it. Click, 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 click. Oh, was I pissed when I heard that one, man. I'm sitting here, okay, it'd be cool if it's just a battery, which it could be. Uh, but you got to go deeper with uh, what the hell's going on with the charging system when the battery went down, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, we are going to go into the news for today. We're going to be talking about some club stuff uh, here in the United States, going over to Canada, and then Australia, and then wait till you see one of the stories sent in by Corey Graff. It has to deal with them freaking schlucks that are riding and stuff. I guess one got arrested and was crying his ass off. 
crying his ass off. So it's going to be funny show, man. Let's get over to our biker news, man. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come get over for there. what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Go, we are back for our bike news. Observer reporter. Three plead guilty to charges relating to hiding Vasquez's motorcycle. As you know, this had to do with uh, a pagan, and he was uh, charged again because he was hiding his freaking motorcycles. So they didn't get repossessed. Now, if this is going to happen where people are going to get charged, ain't that a civil matter, by the way? Uh, you know what? I just had to point that out. Here in Illinois, it's a civil matter. It has nothing to do with criminal stuff. But I guess out there, it's something different. Yes, two members of Matthew Vasquez's extended family entered guilty pleas in Washington County Court to charges relating to Hayden motorcycles that were about to be repossessed. There's a lot of people who's went some through some financial hardship. And in order to avoid the repo man, they either lock him in the garages or hide him. That's the repo uh, man's job. The freaking skip tracers is to try to find it. This is the first time, though, I've ever heard anybody get charged, and it has to do because the guy was a member of the Pagans, I bet you. Anyway, a third depend, uh, defendant also entered a guilty plea. Karen Lid Wadsworth, 50, uh, Vasquez's cousin, was placed on probation for a year in exchange for the plea on one misdemeanor count of receiving stolen property. How is that even the case? Did you have a good lawyer? Because how is it stolen property? He entered into a civil agreement for a loan. Of course, he probably couldn't pay the loan because he was in jail. So I said, here, take my bikes. How is that stolen property? Her husband, David Wadsworth, 50, pleaded guilty to conspiracy and defrauding secured creditors, for which Judge Valerie Castano sentenced him to a total of two years probation. Michael A. Showalter, 31, pleaded guilty to the same charges as David Wadsworth and given the same penalty. Vasquez, 32, is accused of making arrangements via record or recorded conversations and video chats with the co-defendants to conceal 2014 and 2018 Harley-Davidson's. His case was postponed until November. Vasquez is serving a sentence of 21 and a half to 43 years in prison after a jury convicted him of a brutal beating. In April of 2019, a former pagan motorcyclist who had joined a rival club. Several other members uh, pleaded guilty as well to receive lesser sentences. So again, I'm still lost at how this is stolen property. Maybe again, they have different laws out there. I don't know. But here in Illinois, I've never seen it happen. Now, let's go up to Canada. Oh, Canada. I don't sing too good, so I better stick to my day job. Uh, the Montreal Gazette. Organized crime squad launches drug raids in Quebec City area. 13 residences, businesses, and vehicles were targeted in the Quebec City region. Again, this is the Montreal Gazette. Quebec's organized crime squad said Tuesday it was carrying out a series of drug raids in the, the capital nationale. I am not even... I do not speak French! So I will not try. <laughs> uh, the Esquadron National D represent... Hey, why can't you speak English? 
conducting 13 searches of residences, businesses, and vehicles in the Quebec region. You know what? That is why they gave French in high school. I wasn't there for it. Maybe that's because, you know, they have it north of the border. I don't know. But how did that even happen where you have French speaking up there? I thought Canada was settled uh, by the English. Uh, maybe I don't know my history too well. Maybe I don't know it too well. Uh, the search places are associated with individuals with ties to organized crime, specifically the Hells Angels, according to ENRCO. Well, why didn't you just say that earlier instead of making me look stupid because I can't speak French? The operation was being carried out as part of an ongoing investigation in order to not harm the investigation. Uh, what is that? Sarit du Quebec? <laughs> oh, I know I'm going to have everybody laughing at me from Canada. Said it will not be issuing any further comments. The mandate of ENRCO is to target organized crime leaders, including members of the Hells Angels. Uh, ENRCO is made up of police officers, uh, the service de police de la Villa de Quebec. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get off of this one. You know, I just ain't good with this one, but there's been raids all over, uh, what's it called, uh, Canada. Now, maybe let's go to something a little easier across the pond over in Ozzy. Uh, infamous uh, former Queensland bikey Shane Bowden has been moved from a Gold Coast hotel quarantine to hospital for, quote, treatment of an existing injury. Queensland's detectives are working with their Victorian counterparts to investigate whether the 48-year-old committed fraud upon his return to Queensland. An offense that carries up to five years in jail, and you can better believe that they're going to be playing that one, baby. Uh, we got to exit full. Uh, Mr. Bowden was seized by police at Brisbane Airport after coming in on a Jetstar flight, JQ 560, which took off from Melbourne's Telemarine Airport and landed in Brisbane at 9.19 a.m. In a statement, Queensless, uh, Queensland, uh, Queensless, uh, Queensland uh, police said Mr. Bowden allegedly provided false information on his Queensland border declaration and breached quarantine. It sounds like quarantine's pretty bad over there, man. Uh, Mr. Bowden had previously tested positive for COVID-19 in Victoria and initial fears were he could have infected the other 84 passengers. However, Queensland Health spokesman said a public health alert would not be issued for the flight as, quote, new advice indicated he was not infectious while traveling. Basically, they're screwing with this guy. I think he's uh, ex uh, Finks, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but you can see how freaking uh, he was involved with the uh, infamous ballroom blitz brawl at the Gold Coast Royal Pines Resort in 2016. We actually covered that on HarleyLiberty.com back then. Uh, three people were shot, two were stabbed, and more than $40,000 worth of damage was caused to the resort's grand ballroom after members of the Finks and Hells Angels uh, motorcycle gangs clashed at a kickboxing tournament. So there you go. That's who he is, a former Finks. That's what I thought. Uh, now, uh, let's see here. We covered this uh, the other day, Sh uh, Shane De uh, Britt murder. Uh, the third man uh, arrested as part of the investigation on that one. A 22-year-old uh, man has been arrested over the shooting murder of an outlaw motorcycle gang member north of Malong. On January 14th, Bandito's outlaw motorcycle gang Central West Chapter President Shane De Britt was killed by a gunshot wound to his head. At a property. Now, let's go back to the beginning of the show. Where we're talking about clubs getting along. This was a Central West chapter president of the Banditos. Do you really believe that they'd be ready for peace after this? Keep that thought. 
Last Friday, detectives arrested two men aged 58 and 39 at a rural property near Stewart Town. Uh, the men were charged over the alleged roles in the shooting murder and remain before court. As part of ongoing inquir uh, inquiries, homicide detectives arrested a 22-year-old man. Bad state of affairs there, young kid. Outside of business uh, in Wellington on Wednesday, two search warrants are currently uh, underway at the business and at the home. So there you go. Oh, there's about, what, two stories over across the pond. Now, yeah, here we go. Nine Boston police officers arrested, charged an overtime fraud uh, scheme. This is Corey Graff's wall of shame. All are being released on personal recognizance. This is the warehouse here in Hyde Park where they were assigned uh, handling evidence involved in cases. But according to federal prosecutors, they submitted for overtime pay for hours. They did not actually work. Hey, sounds like Chicago. Boston police officers now accuse defendants in holding cells appearing in virtual federal court hearings this afternoon. Nine officers, six of them retired, were indicted for embezzlement, totaling $200,000 over a three-year period. The highest-ranking officer indicted, Lieutenant Timothy Teregian, seen here with the Boston Police Commissioner. The U.S. attorney in a statement said, these officers are charged with stealing taxpayer money year after year through fraud. Beyond the thefts of funds, this kind of official misconduct also erodes trust in public institutions at a time when that trust is most needed. The officers largely worked at this warehouse as part of the unit responsible for storing and handling evidence. Prosecutors say they would leave two or more hours early, yet still submit for their full overtime shifts. The alleged fraud first discovered by Boston Police's anti-corruption unit. In a statement, the commissioner, William Gras, says in part, news of these indictments send a strong message that this type of behavior will not be tolerated or ignored and can damage the trust my officers have worked so hard to build in the communities we serve. The three officers who are still active with the police department have been suspended without pay. And the district attorney, the Suffolk County District Attorney, just releasing a statement uh, condemning the alleged actions and also uh, calling into question possibly any case that they may have been involved in. Live in Hyde Park, Sarah Conchie, WCVB News Center 5. All right, Sarah. Oh, my goodness gracious. No, we got nine officers now in the wall of shame on the same day. <laughs> of course, you know, I have to, you know, bring this up an overtime fraud uh, scheme. If you're in uh, Illinois, pay to play is every damn where here in this city. Cops, politicians, Manigan, he, uh, I think he's going to be taken down, man, with this FBI investigation, uh, him taking uh, crap from ComEd and stuff. ComEd's already pleaded guilty. They're paying a huge freaking fine. Uh, so I wonder if the, the commissioner himself, man, was involved in some stuff, man. They all are. But that is uh, the wall of shame. This is a funny one. <laughs> so tough these kids are. New York Post Antifa commander with flamethrower bursts into tears during arrest. <laughs> There's the commander, the tough guy, Commander Red. An Antifa leader known as Commander Red was busted carrying a flamethrower to a Wisconsin Black Lives Matter rally and, quote, dropped into the fetal position and began crying when stopped by cops. Matthew Banta, <laughs> you're not so tough, huh? Uh, 23 is known to be a violent Antifa member who incites violence and otherwise relatively peaceful protest a criminal complaint in his Green Bay arrest record insisted. Do you know they just came out with the numbers? I think there was like 175 arrests in that Kenosha thing. Uh, 100 of them were from out of state. Think about that for a minute. More in my final thoughts on that. Uh, he was carrying stickers and a flag for the controversial group, the name of which is short for anti-fascist, along with military-grade five-minute smoke grenades, firework rockets, and a flamethrower. I wonder if he, you know, he, it's an actual flamethrower. He made one of them. Banta was stopped after being spotted with a whole bunch of white people 
with sticks, baseball uh, bats, and helmets he heading toward a BLM event in Green Bay. The others fled when they cop blocked them with the squad car, but Banna was stopped and dropped into the fetal position and began crying. What a putz. The police report said he complained that the officer got on top of him, which the police denied. It's worrisome when police or people associated with Antifa come here to Green Bay from out of town for the purposes of committing violent acts. <laughs> He's out on a cash bond of 10000 I wonder if freaking Harris and Biden paid that. You know, all of a sudden that the polls are shifting under their ground uh, and people, you know, know him for what he is, man. A freaking uh, joke. Uh, all of a sudden he wants to come out and talk tough on uh, violence and all that stuff, but it's his own people that were paying the for these idiots to get out of town. I think there was a freaking actual tweet from Camelia Harris. You know, yeah, I heard she gives good head, though. That's what, the, you know, the mayor uh, that she was with says. You got to work your way to the top somehow, I guess. And that's, you know, you got to use what you got to use. But, uh, yeah, these guys ain't so tough when it comes to push to shove, is it? <laughs> you got to love it, man. You really got to love it. Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Oh, hey, welcome back to the show. Time for my final thoughts, man. That last one with Antifa, boy, does that just warm my heart. It warms me heart, man. You know, you got all these freaking, they claim to be anti-fascist, but what did fascists actually do to get their points across? Yeah, they were out there looting, burning, uh, doing everything they claim to stand against. The Department of Justice actually came out and said that is it, that it's investigating who's the money people are behind this but this begs the question are you really going to do anything about it any damn way because you know there's two di different sets of rules we seen that with the ugly pelosi she got to go into a, a hair salon all the businesses are closed around san francisco because of that and she wasn't wearing a mask. She is also the one that claims that it's too dangerous for people to go out and vote in person. She also came out today and said, it was a setup. They set me up. They do not take responsibility whatsoever for any of their actions. What you're seeing now in this country, the hypocrisy of that party is disgusting. Disgusting. You're the Speaker of the House, and you're going to claim a small business owner that lost 60% of her clients because of what these regulations say. You're calling her a liar. You're going out there bashing her. She shut you up. And that she should apologize to you. That's what she said. Look it up. Anyway. Are they going to find the people behind it? They already probably know who's behind all this stuff. But are they going to do something about it? For the last four years. All we have heard was Russia, Russia, Russia. That was disproven. Actually, that was a setup job. Has anybody been arrested? All the evidence is right there. Not yet. We're going to see, but not yet. It hasn't happened yet. And that was the FBI that did it. There's a wall of shame candidate right there. James Comney. The biggest liar that ever freaking held the office other than Hoover. 
But have they been arrested? No. But I guess if you hide a vehicle being repossessed, you get extra time and so does your family for doing it. See the different tiers of justice in this country? Hey, if Antifa and these other BLM idiots weren't involved, I'd actually support the protest. Because there is two uh, tiers of justice in this country. But when you start stepping on American flags, burning them, claiming anti-American this, you're a racist that, yeah, you done lost the support, man. Bye-bye, baby. I'll never support BLM. I think that's a joke. And Antifa is even more. But when it comes down to brass tacks, they're not so damn tough. Curls up in a ball and starts whining and crying. After you were carrying around a flamethrower, fireworks, uh, military-grade gr uh, smoke grenades, not so tough when you actually get confronted, are you? You know, it's... You type of people that are used for fun in the joints, what I can tell you. Because you have no basis in reality. The world does not owe you nothing. But that's what these kids think. You got to ask yourself with these riots. And the left actually supported them. They're not going to be able to claim they didn't. Yeah, you there you had a vice president candidate come out and say everybody needs to start bailing them out you notice how they're hiding her they don't want her to come out now and it was funny with the uh, dum dum dimension uh dementia joe he read the first line of notes that were given to him i couldn't believe this and that empty vessel is what you guys uh on the left want as a president but anyway they were supporting this uprising they were flying people from out of state to kenosha probably in minneapolis too but hey god forbid they try to blame the hell's angels for that one on brother man people are not damn stupid i don't care what you see when it comes to these polls it's bs because if you look on all the platforms, look at your buddies and your friends, they're all voted in the right way, if you ask me. <laughs> you know, because I can't see an empty vessel. Uh, on the other stories, talked about it earlier. How is it right? And I thought, it, you again, I might be wrong. There might be laws against this, so don't take it as gospel. I'm just coming from an Illinois standpoint. That's a civil deal. That has nothing to do with anything but civil. If you want to hide your car, hide your car. You know, it's a cat and mouse game. If they get it, they get it. If not, they're not. But, you know, they even call the police. And if you tell them, you ain't taking nothing off my property. Well, the cop turns around and says, hey, this is a civil matter. We can't do nothing about it. Walk away. But because he was a pagan in a big case... They threw charges at him and his family or associates. That, again, is not justice. That is a two-tier hypocrisy and laughable at that. And I think that's the reason why people are so damn tired of what's going on in this country with these rich elites. I get it. You need rich people. But do you notice all these rich people going for jobs that only pay $120,000 a year? $120,000 or $150,000, whatever it is that they get paid to be a congressman or a senator. Multi-millionaires, but they have to be in them jobs. Why? Because they want power over you. They do not care about you. When are people going to understand that? They are there for the power. And for that freaking broad to go after a small business owner and she being the Speaker of the House 
is disgusting. And everybody shouldn't let that broad live it down. Because people are sick and tired of the lies and the hypocrisy that comes out of that party. I'm hoping it's going to be like freaking Britain, where they just freaking ran the table and made that freaking one party nothing but a, you know, a handful of people. I hope that happens this time around. Because that, you know, what happened that that pagan shouldn't have happened, man. Shouldn't have happened, but hey, different time uh it is, I guess today. Uh the stuff over in Australia, and I brought that up about the Banditos president get shot. And that kind of rolls into the monologue, if you will. You just can't give that, you know, people got to pay for something like that, man. There's not going to be any peace. So that just happened, uh, what, 2018 was it? Or 2019, something like that. Just happened. So how are you going to expect his brothers to let that go? Oh, we got to let it go so there's peace. That's not how the world works, man. And if you look at the angle of being a blood brother, a family member, you're not going to let that happen, like I said in the, the beginning of the show. So I think I pretty much uh, hopefully set that uh, subject down, man, and don't need to be talked about. But hey, it is what it is, at least on my platform. Canada, especially Quebec. You guys are killing me with the French, man. Printed it in English so I can read it. But they're going uh, spaz crazy up in Canada. They're trying to arrest everybody and everybody. Uh, I guess, you know, they're getting uh, the laws like uh, Australia are. <laughs> uh, the nine guys in the wall of shame. Don't that just warm your heart? But you know that a lot of other people are doing the same thing. So their crime was using overtime and lying about it. Which isn't cool. Isn't cool. They deserve to be in the wall of shame. But knowing that uh, politicians are doing it, other professionals are doing it, how hypocritical critical can you damn be? <laughs> really, it's like you're nuts. You're just straight up nuts. Uh, anyway, don't forget to go over to Spotify. Uh, download that app, man. Listen to us over there on the radio and stuff. Apple Podcasts, Google Play. Uh, every damn freaking podcast and platform. Whatever one you got, download the app. Put in Motorcycle Madhouse and boom, we're popping up. Don't forget at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, Hollywood and China Doll evening show. Yes, that's popping out, man. You you know what? We did the first episode. I think everybody really liked it. Uh, it's going to be really going strong next week. And I do have people asking me, you know, can you put it on the YouTube channel? And, you know, maybe I'll make, a, you know, a YouTube channel up for just that show. I'll let you know. I already got another uh, channel uh, that I haven't really been hitting. Uh, so I'll put it over there probably because, quite frankly, I want to keep this channel over on YouTube and Facebook biker-related. Uh, you know, once you start getting into other areas because there's politics uh, being talked about. Well, there's politics on this one, but it fits in with what's uh, going on in the scene. Uh, but we're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff on that show, so it's not really biker-related show. So, yeah, maybe I'll uh, put it on there. That way you guys can see it, premiere it, talk in the chat room. China Dow loves all that crap. So, with that, I'll talk to you guys later, baby. Get your, get your copy of New Age of Biking and Brotherhood by Insane Throttle's very own James Hollywood Machiart. New Age of Biking and Brotherhood will take you on a journey of the past and present bikers. Get your copy on Amazon and all major book retailers. Rock on. So you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now.
rock on. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on